to Lose Art, I'm Carmelita Greco. Have you ever considered the stars, the majesty of the heavens, the trees, the flowers, the ocean, the sea creatures? Each made in a unique way for a unique purpose. The stars and the moon light the evening and the sun lights the day. The flowers and the trees soak up the sunlight, tilting their tops in a direction of the sun. What beauty surrounds us? Did it all just appear, or is there a divine hand keeping everything in balance, a divine creator? At Luz Art, we explore the wonder of creation through the eyes of the divine creator. We unpack biblical scripture through the lens of devotional artists. The Bible is full of parables and mysteries that can be difficult to grasp without understanding. Walk with me as I study the words of the prophets that lived long ago, the life of Jesus, and the mystery of the second coming of Christ. Today we're going to discuss the death and resurrection of Jesus. See, long ago, over 6,000 years ago, a curse came upon all mankind. This curse was brought about by rebellion against the Creator. Rebellion resulted in a curse, a curse of sin and death. And the only way to remove this dreadful curse was to send a promise seed made in God's own image to break the curse on all mankind. This is the story of Jesus. He is the promised seed prophesied in Genesis 3:15. The seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. God would birth a promised seed into the earth to break the curse over all mankind. This painting by artist Wayne Fort shows the victory Jesus would have over the serpent. Now, regardless of denomination, the death and resurrection of Christ is a core Christian doctrine. Our Christian faith hinges on the death and resurrection of Christ. The Bible is very clear that the sins of mankind needed to be atoned. The book of Leviticus walks us through the atonement rituals that God required of the Israelites. The Israelites were God's chosen people, a people that would carry the message of God to the nations, and through their lineage, they would produce a promised seed. Jesus the Messiah came through the lineage of David. Matthew 1, 17 says, There were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile of Babylon, and 14 from the exile to Messiah. The Israelites were told to offer the best of their flock as a sacrifice to the Lord. If you were a poor family, you would offer a small bird, and a wealthy family would offer their best. God made this message clear through the prophet Moses, that you should not offer animals at his holy altar that had a defect. This was foreshadowing the perfection of Jesus. Jesus was a man without sin. He was without spot or wrinkle. God offered his best to atone for the sins. He offered his own son. Now, as we reflect on the message of the cross, and the payment for the sins of mankind, will try to understand the suffering servant prophesied in Isaiah 53. The verse was approximately written 700 years before Christ was born, and it reveals his purpose, his ultimate death and resurrection. The prophet Isaiah, inspired by the Holy Spirit, would prophesy God's coming servant and the plan of redemption. As I share Isaiah 53, we will view a series of prints from a group of artists commissioned by Christians in the visual arts. In 1994, a select group of artists came together to honor the sacrifice of Christ and capture the precious moments before his death. These images help us to better understand the suffering of Christ. His cup was beyond difficult but his victory over death glorious. Isaiah proclaims, who has believed our message and whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root from dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain 
like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us turned our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before his shares is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence nor any deceit in his mouth, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he had suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This prophetic message from Isaiah perfectly describes the person of Jesus, the suffering servant that bore the sins of mankind. As we look at these images, we see the image of Bruce Herman showing the mocking and the crowning of Christ. Edward Nippers shows the lashes on his back. By his stripes we are healed, and the punishment that brought us peace was on him. This next print by artist uh, Wayne Fort shows the crucifixion. Now the last words of Jesus were, it is finished, it is accomplished. Death was defeated and the payment for sin atoned. God made a way for mankind to be reconciled to a perfect and holy God. He sent a perfect sacrifice to atone for our sins. Praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Holy Spirit. Scripture reveals that at the time of Christ's death, there was an earthquake that shook Jerusalem, Matthew 27. And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split, and the tombs all broke open. Now this series of prints by Chris Anderson shows the shaking in the heavens at the time of Christ's death. According to the Jewish calendar and astrological calculations, Friday, April 3rd, 33 AD is the approximate date of the death of Christ. Now all four gospels say that the crucifixion occurred on a Friday. All four gospels agree that Jesus died a few hours before the beginning of the Jewish Sabbath. And the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, indicate that Jesus died before nightfall on the 14th day of Nisan, right before the start of the Passover meal. The death of Christ is a historical fact, and the eyewitness accounts of the resurrection are fully disclosed in the Gospels. Is it true? Is Jesus alive? And did he die for me? Now this painting by artist Victor Atkins poses this question, is it true? The words are beautifully disguised in this painting. These are questions we must ask ourselves. This is where faith begins. It begins with searching and inquiring. Each person must ask and receive the gift of salvation themselves. Now Jesus made some very bold statements. John 11:25 25 says, Jesus said to her, 
I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. The words of Christ echo so beautifully in this painting by artist Debbie Clark. This next painting highlights the scripture, Ask, Seek, Knock. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. For whoever asks receives, and the one who seeks find, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. When we search for truth with our whole heart, we will find it. God is knocking at the door of our hearts. Will you let him come in and dine with you? Artist featured Wayne Fort, Victor Adkins, Bruce Herman, Edward Nippers, Chris Anderson, Mindy Oten, and Debbie Clark. All work shown is on view at Lou's Art and part of the International Fine Art Fund 501c3. We are located at 1640 Irving Boulevard in Dallas, Texas.